five, four, three, two, go. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Robert Matutino, and on behalf of the co-pastors and our board of trustees, we welcome you to Kobe Memorial Temple for our Sunday service. To begin our service, Jacqueline Martin will light three lights symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. And if you'll please rise for our opening prayer and remain standing for our first hymn. Infinite Intelligence, we thank you so much for this gathering that we have this morning here in Kobe Temple. We invite the spirit loved ones and angels to gather close. We ask that all people receive love and blessings and so this. In the first hymn, our musician, Damian Bonazzoli, will play this little light of mine. If you can turn to page 179. <laughs> Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I Everywhere I go, I Building Building a home. I know Thank you, you may be seated. All right, located on the handout in the front cover of the hymnal are our Declaration of Principles. Please join with me in reciting these principles together. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomenon of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomenon of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm that the moral responsibility of the individual and that he makes his own happiness or unhappiness as he obeys or disobeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. 
We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. All right, and in the back cover of your hymnal, you'll find the prayer for spiritual healing. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and the power of God. And now for those of you who wish to receive spiritual healing, please take a seat along the wall and go to the next available healer. And while the healers work, the rest of us will join in a guided meditation. If you could find a comfortable position, clear your backs if possible, and cross your arms and legs, place your hands on your lap, up or down, whichever is most comfortable, and put your feet flat on the floor. With each breath that you take, focus on your body, sitting in the chair, relaxing a bit, with each exhale. Focus your attention to allow your breathing to relax into a steady, comfortable rhythm. With your mind, check in with your body from the top of your head, scanning down your body, and in any area where you feel tension, mentally send the thought to that area to relax. We are all divine, eternal, spiritual beings experiencing life in a body. Bring to mind our ability to use our imagination to intentionally create healing energy. Imagine and visualize a brilliant, sparkling, yet warm and comfortable white light descending from the universe down in a beam of light that goes directly to the top of your head and see that light forming a bubble of light that completely encircles your being. Visualize and sense the presence all around the room of powerful healing angels. They're lining the wall completely encircling us all. Have the intention to accept this healing in any area of your life and your body where it is needed. Sense the feeling of a pure, unconditional love coming from these angels and filling your bubble with healing energies. With intention to share this healing love, imagine a shining healing ray of light going out into the world to all of your beloved ones, your friends, your neighbors, to all people.
Imagine this light going to all animals, all plants, all minerals of the kingdom and of the planet. And as you visualize with your intention to do so, send that ray of healing from your heart and visualize it covering our entire planet Visualize it shining out into our solar system, into infinity. And now from this place of love and sharing, have the thought that you want to invite your loved ones in spirit, perhaps teachers and angels to join you here. Ask them to impress on our message bearer this morning, the highest and the clearest message for you at this point in time. Thank these spiritual guides and guardians in advance for any messages that they have come here to share with you. Within your heart, feel the feeling of gratitude. For thankfulness for all blessings and all healings received. Now think about your body sitting here in the chair. Once again, breathe deeply with the intention to accept the healing occurring in this light and begin to feel your body and feet on the floor as you bring yourself back to full awareness of being here in this room. You can wiggle your fingers and toes and open your eyes. If you received a healing resulting in a correction or an improvement, please complete one of these yellow cards that are located in the back. You can also see the pastor for one. And please remember when you fill the card out to put the person's name, the name of the healer that you sat with. If you don't know their name, please ask them. For this morning, I'm going to introduce that starting here on this side, we had Marty Hadway. We have the Reverend Deborah Breton Gamber. We have the Reverend Dr. Sheldon Gamber. On this side, we have Daryl Demerit and Laura Carter as our healers this morning. And you can either uh, place this in the collection plate if you'd like to fill it out now, or you can see on the back, you can actually even mail it in. And if you would please stand for our next hymn, number 196, America the Beautiful.
fall for space, just got forever wings of gray. Thank you, you may be seated. It is my pleasure this time to introduce to you our speaker for today. Vicki Joan Rowland, a professional astrologer. She's a graduate of the University of Florida and has a professional practice as an astrologer and parapsychologist based in Orlando, Florida. You can see her YouTube videos for presentations about astrology and other branches of metaphysics. She currently offers star dates, daily astrology updates on Facebook, and she frequently presents programs at various venues throughout the USA, as well in the UK. And if you went to Dickie Joe's website, you would see quite the list of uh, contributions that she's made as an author to many different uh, magazines and articles on astrology. She's a much revered and welcome speaker here in Casadega. And without further ado, please let me introduce the young one. Good morning, everybody. And I'm Robin, thank you for the lovely introduction. It's always great to be here in Casadena, very special place. I thought and thought about what you might enjoy this morning. And there is a spiritual traditional holiday called Lamas that's starting to be um, practiced today through August 1st. Lamas is the midpoint between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. It's the celebration of the first harvest, but that didn't quite sound right. 
And then I thought about the full moons. We have four super moons in a row and a retrograde Venus, which those of you who are astrologers will know it's a wild and crazy time. Anyone feeling strange mentally or encountering odd things? If you are, hang on, because um, after late September, those trends will ebb. But right now, we have to just focus on stability. But that didn't quite sound right either. And then I thought about the, um, the founding of the spiritualist religion, which coincided so much with the Civil War and with Americanism and our flag. And if you've noticed, almost all of the traditional spiritualist artwork, pictures from earliest times back in the 1840s to today feature an American flag and they're flying all over here, even though it's past 4th of July. So you have a hint that, and Robin also let me pick out the music for today, which is all patriotic, that um, we're going to talk about the spirituality and mystical connections in the founding of our beloved country. So um, the Great Seal of the United States was created in 1782, and the number 13 is prevalent throughout it, uh, throughout the Great Seal. You can find pictures of it everywhere, and you'll see that there's an eagle holding 13 arrows. There are 13 tail feathers in the eagle. Um, there um, was a 13-gun salute called by George Washington when he raised the flag for the first time. 13 is a number of the mysteries of the Masonic practices. And also the 13 olive branches for peace. It goes on and on. Esoteric numerology with 13 is just one of the many, many intriguing connections that we have to deeper truths. All around the world, people always try to come here from every other country. Um, we have people immigrating from the Middle East, of course, from south of the border, from Europe, going back generations. They're drawn here, and everybody's psychic, of course. We don't know why we feel drawn to one person or one place and not to another. But um, our country has a certain power, a certain charisma that speaks to others throughout the world on a very, very deep level. If you take a look at a $1 bill, the next time you have one and aren't using your credit card, um, you can really study it and see that there's a lot of mysterious, interesting symbolism just looking at our money. So looking at the origin of phrases connected to the design of the Great Seal of the United States, um, and also to the dollar bill. It was created by Charles Thompson, a one-time Latin tutor, tutor who became the secretary to the Continental Congress, the very beginning of the founding of our government. He picked out phrases inspired by the writings of Virgil in the model of the American Revolution, as well as the, as the symbolism of the number 13. Now, if anyone speaks Latin better than I do, you're welcome to fold, fold something, not the hymn book, into a paper and airplane and toss it at me. But here we go. Anuet copetes means he approves of our undertakings. This refers that he is capitalized to the divine providence that guided the founding of our new nation. That came from a line in Virgil's Ecologue 4. Jupiter omnipotus, audacipis, anime captus, meaning all powerful Jupiter, favor my daring undertakings. Is that a powerful mystical statement? Novus ordo secularum, new order of the ages. This signifies the beginning of a new era in history with the founding of America. It's also derived from the writings of Virgil. Magnus ab integro secularum nascitor ordo, meaning the great series of ages begins anew. E pluribus unum. That one's easier to remember because they use it in the Wizard of Oz. You know, the wizard was kind of an interesting figure. It says e pluribus unum, out of many, one. 
meaning the unity of the states under one federal government, which we kind of take for granted today, but was really kind of a foreign, unique idea at the founding of our nation. You know, the great uh, monarchies at the time of Europe thought democracy was a nasty little germ that would fade away, but it was the other way around, right? So this was originally proposed as the model for the American Revolution by Pierre Eugène de saint a Swiss-born artist and philosopher who was also involved in the Great Seal, which is really important to be aware of. And again, the number 13 appears over and over again here. Justice John Marshall of the Supreme Court, um, one of the early justices, was um, also involved in the mystical um, con connections with our constitution, the way it was written. And Virgil, the Roman poet, who lived from 70 BC to about 19 BC, um, created so many of the ideas that have stayed with us. A large part of the mysteries of our nation have Masonic connections. And the founding of America has a really intriguing tie to the Masonic rituals. I won't ask any of you here if you're traveling yet, because if you're really Masons, you won't raise your hands, right? You have to be secret, not let anyone know who you are. But if any of you are travelers in that regard, you'll know what I'm talking about, traveling along the height, the path of higher consciousness. Um, George Washington, Paul Revere, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Hancock, as well as Justice Marshall, are just some of those who used a lot of secret rituals to create the world that we live in, including at least 14 of the United States presidents. The Constitution of the United States has many links to the British Freemason James Anderson and his 1723 book, The Constitution of the Freemasons. And this was edited and reprinted by none other than Benjamin Franklin, himself a Mason, 11 years later, and was largely agreed that this was to be printed in the United States so that its influence upon America would be notable. Power through the spoken or the written word through um, just the printed material. In terms of the Constitution, um, this is the idea of free speech as a right of citizenship. Given the claims made by Manley Palmer Hall that we mentioned above, it's perhaps easy to see why some would make connections that this was also applied to mystical groups in the free lodges of Europe. The city of Washington, D.C. is a planned city, and it is um, one of, along with the Vatican, sovereign cities on the entire planet. And the layout of sacred places in the United States Capitol, Washington, D.C., forms a five-pointed star, a pentagram which of course we see on our flag, representing each of the states. The pentagram represents the human body, the head with the outstanding arms and the legs makes a star pattern, um, a stance that's often assumed in ritual work. The layout of our capital city, if you look at it, is really interesting. According to those who support this claim, and of course there's some debate about it, but if you really look at a map of Washington, D.C. and trace the monuments, you can see there has to be something to it because the angles and the distances are as precise as something an engineer or an architect would do for a building. Um, the White House is the southernmost point of the pentagram. The top three points are marked by um, the DuPont, Logan, and Scott circles, some prominent names. The furthest left and right points of the Washington Circle and Mount Vernon Square create a lot of the design. Something else that's very interesting is the Knights of the Golden Circle and an historic figure called Albert Pike. He served as a general for the Confederate Army during the Civil War and was well known as a mystic and Masonic 
practitioner of the Scottish Rite. He has proven connections to the Knights of the Golden Circle. Again, um, a secret society involved in prayer, ritual, energies to affect all of us. Further in the apparent Masonic influence is the overall and the overall layout of Washington, D.C. are claims that the Capitol building itself is not only a wash with symbolism, but is a rebuild of Solomon's Temple, going back to ancient Egypt, only an Americanized version of it. Inside the building under the dome is a detailed painting of George Washington where he is portrayed as a deity. So much for the separation of church and state right there and described as an American Christ. Jesus's own divinity was often portrayed the same way. The cornerstone of the Capitol building was also put into place only after a full ritual presided over by President George Washington. What's more, the Capitol buildings are strikingly similar to other ancient and sacred locations. There's an obelisk across from the dome of the Capitol building, similar to the obelisk in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. Don't think any of this is coincidental. And one more interesting controversy um, is that there is supposed to be gold buried away since the end of the Civil War. The gold has never been discovered beneath the Capitol, but it could be a type of spiritual gold. Secret escape passages underneath the Capitol building were hinted at during the tragedy of January 6th. Remember how the Secret Service came and got, um, it brings tears to my eyes, pay no attention, I'm a cancer. I'm um, go sobbing about everything, even looking at my cat because I'm so crazy about him when he's perfectly well. Anyway, um, during the time of the January 6th um, tragedy where we almost lost our country, um, the Secret Service knew how to get the Pence family and um, the different um, documents into a safekeeping place so the um, election could be ratified and our country could go on. We almost lost it. We were much closer than many people realize. Anyway, doing this program and putting together the material, of course I had a major hysteric fit. Templeton looking at me like I was crazy from across the room because it's just so overwhelmingly emotional. The inauguration and the president's oath will also have a spiritual symbol. It's taken even today on a Bible, the same one that supposedly Abraham Lincoln used. There are many connections to ancient Egypt that we can see. Have you ever taken a good look at the back of a dollar bill and seen the pyramid with the eye on top and the top of the pyramid cut off? Um, this is a really interesting symbol with the higher mind, the all-seeing eye on every dollar bill. It's supposed to be a key to a group called the Illuminati, which goes all the way back to ancient Egyptian culture and the all-seeing eye of the god Ra. And a lot of the architectural features around the United States are inspired by Greek architecture, which was also influenced by the Egyptian society. And of course, we've all heard of pyramid power. It was kind of a fad back in the 80s and 90s, and it's still very real that there is an energy that comes through the, um, the geometric forms. There is a, a theory that the Great Pyramid is aligned with longitude and ley lines on the earth, and they correspond to events in history that count down to certain dates. And I don't want to give the dates out because um, it will have everybody in a panic, and it would be kind of fun to do that, but I don't want to do that today. Um, but just say a lot of prayers for our country, everyone. We're at a major turning point in the next year and a half. And I don't want to, again, sound like a doomsday sayer, but there's just um, just a great deal that we want to think about. There's another important figure that we want to look at, is, and that's Sir Francis Bacon, 
who actually had passed away before the United States um, was um, it was founded. He lived from 1561 to 1626. And he wrote something called the New Atlantis, which influenced our nation's founder, founders. He was a philosopher and statesman and Lord Chancellor of England. And Francis Bacon was one of the three most influential people on the planet. A lot of his studies, I think, influenced the early teachings of spiritualism. For those of you who have done a lot of scholarship um, about spiritualism and the different principles that we believe in. And this is something that's really interesting to research in terms of our spiritual beliefs and in terms of our country. Bacon was a keen researcher of esoteric knowledge and it was in his vision that he saw a utopia in the Americas to the West. And although he was prominent in British politics, he sent his son over what was soon to be the United States to be the eyes and ears of what was really going on. And so there was a long, long plan going all the way back to create our country. Uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland stamp from Canada in 1910 had the following inscription on it. Lord Bacon, the guiding spirit in the colonization scheme. And it seems to suggest that there are just deeper and more profound truths of what we do and think and say all of the time. This year coming up is really significant. We have a blue moon, of course, the full moon at the end of the month of August. It's the second full moon in the month. And at the same time, the planet Pluto is strongly aspected. Pluto was the god of the underworld, death and rebirth and mythology. And all of the different astrological meanings of the planets tie in with mythological teachings. If you think of Mercury, and if you think of Venus, Mars, the other deities, and then look at the planets, you can see that there's a deeper connection to the whole thing. So this is really an interesting time to be alive. We won't be bored, everybody, anyway, in the next few years. But there are a lot of shifts and changes going on. And there are many people that I read for that want to abandon the United States and go to other countries. I've never seen so many people interested in expatriate communities in places like Ecuador and also um, Argentina and to a lesser extent in Paraguay and in um, in Europe too in the Basque country region. And I wonder if everything is starting to reverse the other way and if there are other things we should look at in terms of this. But it's just very interesting that for so many generations, all anyone wanted was to come here. And that's still true to an extent. But there are a lot of people whose families have been here that are thinking of going the other way. We have a lot of people here from Casadega that are going to Mexico, at least to visit, some to live. And is there something else happening or going on? Because again, there's a group mind. Everyone is psychic. There is a TV show that is interesting in that it's called Ask the Audience, where if there are contestants who don't know what to do about a question, they can ask for the audience to give an opinion. And almost always, the group is always right. So it's just kind of interesting to look at the universal mind or mass consciousness in terms of psychic phenomena and what's happening in that regard. So let me see. I think it's about time to conclude. Am I right? This portion. I always, I have all these Gemini planets in my birth chart, so I go on and on. But at any rate, hopefully there are some interesting thoughts to think about and consider about magic and how the world around us is magical. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dickie Joe. You always provide such interesting information. All right.
during the musical interlude, Damien will uh, play for us. And we will be passing our basket around uh, for donations, and we thank you in advance for your generosity. Infinite Intelligence, we thank you for the generosity of those who donated this morning. We ask that they receive tenfold for their generosity. Thank you. And we have some announcements. Next Wednesday, August the 2nd, our message bearer for our Wednesday night service will be Reverend Don Cassidy. And next Sunday, which is August the 6th, our guest speaker at our 10.30 a.m. service will be the Reverend Diane Davis. Every Sunday, we have Adult Lyceum, also known as Sunday School, from 9.30 to 10.15 in the Andrew Jackson Davis Building. Next Sunday, August 6th, our Lyceum speaker will be the Reverend Dr. Sheldon Gamber. We are in need of volunteers for Gala Day this coming Saturday, right? August the 5th, coming up really fast. If you would like to help out as a volunteer at that Gala Day event, um, you can either call the office or I will put you in touch with Miss Sandra Lord today, who's here and who's going to be helping to organize uh, the volunteers. So for upcoming events this afternoon, we have a new member orientation in session number two, and it will be held from 1 p.m. to 2.30. They're about at the Berkner Building, which is located across the street from the bookstore building at 1090 Stephen Street. This afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m., Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates will be having a workshop, Spiritual Healing for Beginners and Advanced Students, and that's also at the Andrew Jackson Davis. Also coming up Saturday, August the 5th, join us for our Spirit of Enlightenment Gala Day 
which I just mentioned, that's going to go from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will be readings by certified camp mediums, speakers, vendors, uh, with jewelry, crafts, clothing, etc., food trucks, and a kid's scavenger hunt. So please come out and participate with us. To participate in absent healing, please print the name and first initial of the last name back here in the corner in our healing book. Also, uh, flyers for camp events are at the back of the temple, and we have an activities calendar and church bulletin in your hymnal. That's for you to take home or to give to a friend. This month, they look like, well, this is for August. I think this is this what they have today. Anyway, they're in your book. All right. Our website, castadega.org, also has a monthly information as well as other upcoming events. And I would um, recommend that you always take a look at the online calendar for updates as far as scheduling is concerned. And if you'll now please stand, um, we will sing, this land is your land, and you should have a, a handout with the words on it. From Thank you. You may be seated. For the message portion of our services, I would like to reintroduce Reverend Dickie Joe Mullen, who will be our message bearer. Hi again, everybody. Oh, there's so much energy here today with the full moon coming up. Pay attention to your dreams, everyone. There can be some visitations coming through in dreams. Um, Jacqueline, could I come to you here today? I feel a lady in spirit from your father's side of the family. I think it was a grandmother, a great aunt that 
um, had a big mouth. She didn't intend to hurt anyone, but she called it as she saw it. You can place it. She's uh, praising you, and she said she's sorry. She was quite so critical of people who said so many things, and you're smiling, and that means she's doing well in the spirit world. When we smile about someone, that's a very good sign, and when we don't, it means that they need some prayers to move further up into what they're supposed to be doing on the other side. Anyway, she wants you to think well of her, and she's kind of patting you on the back. Did she do hair styling by any chance, or was she one who went to the beauty parlor? Because her hair, she wants you to, I think your hair is pretty, but she was fixing your hair to let you know that it was she, because she knew that you would know what that meant. We'll leave that with love and blessings. Oh, and let's see. Damien, would you like a message? You work so hard, everyone loves your music. So, and um, from you, I feel a church musician going back. But there was somebody who worked a great deal with liturgical music that saw your potential and is encouraging you. I think the music you're doing here is lovely, but the spirit here wants you to work more with some liturgical music. And of course, um, that's a free will thing because entities on the other side still keep their opinions. So again, that's just a suggestion not to mess up your lovely repertoire here. But I'm hearing things in Latin akin to the Gregorian chant. And um, so anyway, that music is with you. And there is a lot of approval about you moving further with your musical career, whether you were to go with sacred or secular music, not. Are you by any chance working on an advanced degree in music? You're not? Not yet? You were thinking of it, though, or there's an opportunity for you to do that if coming up. And I want to say that it will be worthwhile, even though it would be a big expense of money and time, it would help you. And the time period when you would be deciding about this would be December of this year, for sure. And I leave that with love and blessings. Oh, goodness. I have a whole bunch of friends over here. And I know you'll get mad if I read for some of you and not everyone. I can see it in your auras. But let's go to our, my friend Gail here, who um, just came back from a lovely trip out west. I um, feel deep um, spiritual connections with some of the Native American entities staying with you from Sedona and more especially from Zion National Park. And you may do more with Native American spiritualist guides and messages. We have a strong Native American connection going way back to the early days of spiritualism. If you look at some of the older pictures and writings and so forth, and I'm feeling that there could be, for you coming in, a Native American spirit guide. And I get a strong feeling of birch bark um, do you particularly like birch trees or someone around you like the white trees? Yes, because it's something that it might be the writings of white birch or possibly artwork with the artist tree, the white birch in it that you would be working at or looking at. But I, I feel that very strongly. I also am getting someone with hearing problems from my friend Laura over here. Laura, who in the spirit world that you knew, you don't have to answer this, but just think about it, who um, had problems with certain sounds or hearing or background noise and was always complaining that I can't hear what's going on, I can't hear what's saying, the noise is bothering me, is saying um, now that there's the ability to hear more clearly, you have a slight hereditary situation involving the ears or hearing, and you want to avoid exposure to really long periods of loud noises. Have you noticed your ears will ring if you're at a concert or somewhere where there's a lot of noise? And they're saying just to step away from that, and then that won't manifest in years to come, because of course you're way too young to think about that right now. And I'll leave that with love and blessings. Oh, goodness. Let's see. This gentleman in the turquoise shirt, may I come to you, please? Um, I feel a lady with you who was quite a wonderful cook. Does coconut cream cake or white cake mean anything to you or not? 
because um, I feel a baker, a lady who was not just an average baker, but took a lot of pride, particularly in her cakes. And she's sending a piece of cake. And when there's fragrance of fresh baked goods, you will remember this lady. Sometimes spirit entities come to us with lovely fragrances. And I'm smelling a wonderful kitchen, not to make everybody hungry here, but um, I'm feeling that very strongly with you. And then I also feel um, that she put a lot of love into her housekeeping, even if she didn't always show it outwardly. And she wants you to remember that and remember the family tree and family heritage. I think you have some vintage photos, maybe in an album. And do you happen to have a family Bible with dates written in the back of it, like marriage dates and um, baptisms or anything? If you do, if you hold that and meditate on it, there's a lovely energy coming through with that. And I'll leave that with love and blessings. And my friends over here, I can tell some of you are mad that I didn't come to you. But we have the message service later. The lady with the blonde hair in the middle, next to the gentleman with the green shirt is on your left. Yes, can I come to you, please? Okay, I feel a clown with you or a snowman. Do you remember making a snowman growing up or liking clowns? Okay, that's good because that spirit is with you and still sees you as very young. And if you um, look at, say, pictures of clowns, they have a really interesting history. And snowmen and music or poems about them, that might help you with your own spiritual and psychic development because you're wanting to go further to open up directly psychically. I think you are, right? Rather than to have us mediums translating it all for you. So that may help you a bit along the way. I also feel that even more than with most of us, Christmas was especially important for gatherings with your family. And as you're getting ready for the Christmas holiday season, um, you'll sense the love in your heart from your loved ones on the other side. And I leave that with love and blessings. Oh my, and it's almost time to party on at other places here. So I better turn the program back over to our Robin. Thank you, Dickie Joan. We would like to remind everyone that we will have our afternoon message service from 12 to 12.30 in Kobe Temple right here. The group of mediums and student mediums will be giving spirit greetings to as many individuals as they can in approximately 30 minutes, and everyone is welcome. We encourage you to visit our bookstore, which is open from 11.30 to 5 today and open Monday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And if you'll please rise for our closing hymn, let there be peace on earth.
If you remain standing for our closing prayer, infinite intelligence, we're so very grateful for this time that we've had together this morning. We ask that each of these people move into their new week with love and healing and the highest and best surrounding them. And this we ask in all sincerity and honesty, and so it is. Thank you all. All right.